with the uh, the lessons learned from World War One and gas attacks. By the time World War Two came around, Britain was quite well prepared for gas attacks. Um, as early as 1937, um, the government was issuing uh, leaflets shoved through people's letterboxes, advising them what to do should an enemy launch a gas attack. Um, this is uh, the standard issue British civilian respirator of the Second World War. It was given to those by the government for those people aged from about five years of age upwards. Um, it came when issued in a brown or a tan cardboard box stapled together a hole in either side for a piece of string to go through in a loop and it looped around the neck and um, you've probably seen pictures of them on the newsreels and stuff in there on the top you have the word top top just in case you're stupid enough not know which way around to put it um, on the lid under the lid rather you have the packing instructions the respirator should be placed in box with heavy end container standing on bottom of box the transparent eyepiece should lie evenly on the top of the container and at full length without any deformation and then when respirator is required for use hold respirator by the straps put on first by putting chin into the face piece and then draw the straps over the head adjust straps to obtain close but comfortable fit take off by pulling the straps over the head from the back do not take respirator off by pulling the container upwards over the face. And then you have BCC Limited, who's the maker. And we open it up. And this is one of the uh, better examples that's around. Um, originally, way, way back, about 30 years ago, is when I bought this one. And as I say, it is one of the better ones that survives. Most of them, nowadays, have all rotted because of the rubber face piece. It goes brittle with age drops to pieces there's nothing you can do um, and as is the case with all of these type of things once upon a time they were so common nobody wanted them as soon as they become scarce people start to want them and they pay really stupid money for them anyway here's what we have standard British civilian respirator World War Two. we have a cardboard instruction leaflet practice putting on your respirator and then there's a helpful chart of all the nasty stuff that the Germans or another enemy could drop and um, we have tear gases chlorine gases blister gases and it gives you first aid treatment for various stuff so that's just an example of what would drop through people's letterboxes at the time chart of war gases this one's 1942 anyway in the box you have yeah. what's really nice about this one is it's so complete you have a brown paper bag in the paper bag you have a pair of Bakelite plastic earplugs <clears throat> these would also be issued with the civil defense respirator as well that's what they are and also is a tube of decontamination cream never been used that's still sealed and onto the mask itself in the box is the standard pattern world war ii civilian I'll move the box out of the way civilian respirator um, as you can see just your standard pattern issue one it's uh one two three three maybe four piece respirator you've got the filter you've got a piece of piece of rubber tube which holds the mask to the filter acetate window and the straps and this this one is a nice a nice supple one um, it's, it's still very supple and that will be issued to those aged five through to old age and it's a civilian respirator as well this is a medium sized one they came in various sizes as I say it's, it's just a really nice supple one and on there you have 
the maker's details <coughs> and just a standard pattern filter so that's that one it, it's in really nice condition most of the ones you find now they've gone all brittle the acetate window is because it's been badly stored in some cases will be split across there and in a lot of cases the where the the web strap is fixed to the rubber it goes brittle breaks off they're not really worth buying in that condition but that but that that's a really really nice one as i say it comes complete with cream and air defenders and a chart of war gases so we'll put that one over there now because it came in just a cardboard box um, a lot of people didn't really like the box because when it got wet it went all horrible and fell to pieces <clears throat> so what a lot of um, enterprising stall holders shop dealers used to do they were quick on the mark by making and selling um, fancy covers for the standard cardboard box so what, what we've got here is they went from things like this this is just a a rainproof cloth material person's name and address on the top and again it's just got inside it's just got the standard cardboard box so they went from things as simple as that and you have to actually buy them as well so they went from things like that to the next one up which would be a fancy imitation I'll put that on the top of there so you can see a fancy imitation patterned leatherette type box cover rather with a, a sling and again inside you just have what's left of the cardboard box you know, with you know some just some odds and ends like that and that's a county of Northumberland um, county of Northumberland ARP leaflet and that's the guy's national registration ID card well it's a woman North Stocksfield in Ennerdale in Cumbria and apparently she's an assistant company director BRCS so that's a nice thing to have in the back of there and as I say before the problem with them is over the years they go absolutely brittle as is this one it, it's actually rock solid and i can show you on this one that it just literally it just falls it just falls to pieces it, it just goes really brittle and horrible and there's absolutely nothing you can do about that so that's another form of outer box that they issued and they went from that to this rather fancy padded leather type with the guy's initials on the top and it's also embossed there civilian gas mask that, that's that's quite a nice more heftier box but inside when it's opened up you have the fancy place for the name to go on it's a more fancy inside in which the gas mask is housed voila it comes out so it's been a while since i've had these things out so it may, it may not come out there you go inside you've just got the, the bog standard it's just a piece of cardboard that looks looks all fancy and inside you've got the gas mask and this one it's it's, it's had to be repaired that's that's a period a period repair that because it's actually under the webbing material where it's split so it's had like a field repair and they went from that extreme to the newspaper adverts where you could actually buy a tubular container like that space on the top to write your name and on the bottom you have MB11 1941 now most of these I've found are dated 1941 these tins MB means metal box which was the uh, secret code name for all the metal factories in England during the war and the number would be the number of the factory 
so it'll be metal box factory number 11 somewhere in the country unfortunately the list of the numbers has long since gone so there's no way of knowing but I do know that these were mainly sold in Scottish newspapers so I've actually found quite a few of these and again it's, it's just it's just a tin I can't do it with one hand you just pull it off it's 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 uh, in, outside it's enamel inside it it's still the neutral tin just drop the mask in so th that's my World War II British civilian pattern respirators and I've, I've had loads of them over the years um, but that one there that I bought 30 years ago that remains the better example that I've had it would be very difficult to upgrade to that one and um, so I'll do a few more vids of some other respirators as and when so I tune in so that's the standard civilian pattern World War II British respirators various interesting boxes and outer containers